Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to give my perspective on the Miami condo collapse. For those who are new to the channel, I'm a structural engineer who's recently moved into the forensic engineering side of things. So hopefully my views on this tragedy will be somewhat insightful for some. Okay, so let's just dive straight into it. The two things which pop out to me straight away is the location and also the fact that it's a basement structure or it has a basement structure to it. And the reason I pick these two things out is because I think they have the biggest impact that could cause a structural failure. The reason I think that location is so important is because it's next to open water. And basically when you design a structure, you really need to consider the location because of the salts in the air. Now the salts can basically cause erosion or corrode the reinforcement of your concrete structure or it could corrode away at a steel frame structure. In this case, because I think the Miami condo is actually a concrete frame structure, the salts can basically penetrate into the concrete and erode reinforcement. Now once reinforcement starts to erode or corrode, it basically expands and causes the concrete to spall and break off. And once this happens, further water seepage is going to be even easier. And then basically the more water that gets in, the more harm it's going to do to the concrete and the reinforcement. So I also mentioned that the basement is really critical and that's basically going to go hand in hand with the salts and the water ingress. A basement structure is going to be retaining the soils and it's also probably going to be retaining the water. And basically if the basement fails and it allows water to get in, especially waters with really high levels of salt, that's going to be a major, major problem. So were there any early warning signs which could have told us that there was probably going to be a serious structural failure or collapse? There's a few things which I've read up on the news and there's a report which says that there may be some water ingress in the roof. Personally, I think that if there was standing water, the extra load probably isn't going to cause a structural failure of this kind of magnitude. There was apparently some studies going on nearby which showed that the sands was settling. I'm not sure that the sands settling would have been the overarching failure of the building, but you never know, it could have led to its collapse. But I think the most important telltale sign was a report done in 2018 and that was a structural engineer's sort of condition survey of the entire building. And in this report it does expose the condition of the basement and from some of the pictures which I found on the internet you can really see that the concrete has spooled off and you can see exposed reinforcement. You can also see that it's really wet and damp inside the basement and it's really not something that you want inside a building when it's meant to be dry. So there's two videos which I've kind of seen and the first one here is you can kind of see just before the building collapses that there's some like water leaking and this is probably from like a burst pipe. The other video which I've seen is the video of the building actually collapsing and it's really hard to tell just from this video how a building just collapses like that. I'm not a building collapse expert and I've never studied how a building collapses but from the way that this building does collapse, it kind of seems like it just collapses vertically. Now I can't say for sure what the root cause is just from looking at this video, but by the way that it does collapse, it kind of feels like there's a lack of robustness designed into the building. And basically what robustness design is, is to design the structural element so that in the event it does collapse, the building is not going to collapse further. So basically, the cause of one collapse isn't going to cause the collapse of further elements. From the video, it kind of seems as though the collapse has started from the bottom and it's basically caused a huge chain reaction of failures and it's basically failed all the way until it gets to the movement joints between the buildings or between the parts of the buildings. And because of this chain reaction of failures, I think that there was a lack of robustness in the design. So who was at fault and could it have been prevented? So first of all, let's start off with the original designers, so the engineers and the architect. So the first question is, was the building poorly designed? And it's really hard to tell without really looking at any of the drawings or the calculations. It's almost impossible to really come to a conclusion just by looking at some photos or some video evidence which some people have taken during the collapse. You know, you really have to look deeper than that and really look at the calculations and the design. So then next in the chain is probably the contractor or the builder. Now again, it's really hard to say if they were at fault because the building's been there for 40 odd years. It's you know almost impossible to say that the builder basically built it incorrectly. I think you'd really have to sort of dig deep into sort of correspondence and 
as built drawings and to see if they built it as per the original design. That might lead to some answers to see if the contractor was at fault. And then finally at the top of the chain is going to be the owner or the client. Whilst I don't think the client would be at fault during the design or the construction of the building, I think because there was a seriously damning report back in 2018 and no repairs were really done or really even considered until I think it was like March or April of this year. That length of time between doing anything after receiving such a damning report is pretty suspect. And I think there's going to be some serious questions and probing about why there was such a delay from receiving such a damning structure engineer's report to doing any form of sort of remedial works. I think when a tragedy like this happens, I think the most important thing to do is to try and learn from it to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. Unfortunately, in structural engineering and in this construction industry, a lot of the things that we learn come at a cost of human life. Of course, we always want to eliminate any loss of human life. And I think with new advancing technologies and research, we have kind of achieved this. And I think there's gonna be these freak accidents where even known phenomenons aren't fully understood. And even when they are fully understood, they're maybe not implemented correctly. And it's probably not until something serious happens, like a collapse or a massive failure, that people start really looking into it. An old example where the cause of a collapse basically changed the way that buildings were designed in the UK was Ronan Point. And a more recent example is going to be something like Grenfell Tower in London. Anytime that there's a failure, engineers and experts are going to try and find the root cause of it. And from this, new codes, regulations and guidance are going to start popping up. It's to make sure that you know new engineers and new buildings are going to be designed for the pitfalls that were found in previous structures. So I'm sure that forensic engineering experts are on the case to try and find out the root cause of this building collapse. They're going to be looking at all types of evidence from historic drawings, you know, calculations, correspondence, you know, video footage, um, photo evidence, reports, you know, anything that they can get their hands on to try and figure out what was the root cause. It's probably not going to be one single failure which caused the building just to collapse. I feel that there was probably small problems to begin with, which kind of manifested itself over the time to become really, really big and major problems because no remedial works was done. I think the lack of remedial works or repairs after the 2018 condition report from the engineer is going to be really, really crucial to, to kind of finding out who was to blame. I think that because there was a loss of life, some people may get prosecuted. Now, I can't say for sure who, but anyone who was basically involved could be on the line. I'm quite confident that the building owner or the client or whoever is responsible for sort of maintaining repairs or maintenance of the building is going to be asked some pretty deep and heavy questions about why there was such a delay from the 2018 report to actually actioning any form of remedial works. Hopefully you found this video insightful. I've tried to approach this video differently and I've tried to use my experience from my design background and also my experience of you know, starting out as an expert witness or a forensic engineer. I have seen parts of other people's videos and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't just doing a copy and paste of other people's videos and I really wanted to give sort of my own opinion on what I thought about the building collapse. I'll be sure to keep an eye out on further information that comes out about the Miami condo. So if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.